Hello everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Now I want to show you one of the best visualization techniques I think there is inside of Power BI. I mean there's so many now um, you know, compared to when I, I first sort of created this technique I feel. Um, but to me this still has a lot of positives to it and can really showcase huge amounts of insights within a report page in a really succinct and, and effective way. And what I'm talking about here is multi-threaded visuals, okay? And what do I even mean by that? What I mean with multi-threads is that within a particular visualization, you can look at it in many different ways. It doesn't have to be a static visualization. It can dynamically change what we are showcasing in a number of different ways and I call and I think about these as multiple different threads okay and so how I've set this one up and I want to go through this in a little bit of detail is it, I want to be able to look at my visualization here by I want to look at it by a time frame right I want to look at it by say 90 days or even seven days or and I also want to be able to jump between different metrics I want to actually have a look at my revenue I want to have a look at my profits and this is just the beginnings of what could be possible, right? Because you could have multiple threads, multiple different ways that you feed insights through to a visualization and make it dynamic. Like obviously we have our generic model, which can you, which we can use filters and slices, etc. But this is a way to bring additional insights to a report that you probably just that aren't naturally in. It's not naturally within your raw data, okay? And so this to me is one of those techniques that can really ele elevate your reports to um, to another level, okay? So I just want to just make sure, okay, I'm just going to check a few things. Okay, now, you can actually download this, by the way, off the Enterprise DNA website, okay? So it's part of our resource package. So just go to the Enterprise DNA website and you'll find it there and you can have a play around with this particular model. Now. There's a little bit to do here, okay? So I'm just gonna, we're just gonna slowly, slowly walk through it. Now, first of all, what's really important is the model, okay? Now, I recommend, um, and this is, this, is, this is how Power BI is now sort of creating your models there. They're setting it up in a way that I don't feel is that optimized, right? So this is a good, a good uh, time to just sort of review how I would do it. So, you know, I wanna put all of my lookup tables up the top like this, right? And, I, and, I, and I, I, won't, I won't do it for too long, but basically I would just, you know, to me, the model, right, the, the way I look at this model is I don't really look at what is in this particular view. I don't look at what is in the tables, like what columns there are. I'm just trying here to build a picture in my mind of how the filters will operate when I do something inside of my report canvas, right? Okay. And that's, that's more that what matters here rather than, you know, because you can come jump to here if you want to have a look at specific columns and stuff, right? So here is more just about building, um, building up the map in your mind of how your model actually works, okay? And so I've got a lot of these already set up already, but this is usually I put my supporting tables down the bottom here, right? So already you can sort of, you can see how much more organized this is. Okay, and it's important to do this sort of thing when you're working with quite advanced calculations like what we are going to do right now. Well, it's not actually that advanced. It's just sort of like there's multiple layers to actually make this work, okay? So the first thing you need to do is you obviously need to start off with your your normal metrics, right? So I've got my revenue here, and uh, this is a really simple calculation. In this particular case, I've just used sum x because I've had to go quantity times the current price. The, the price is in a different table, so I've had to use the related function, okay? Then I've got my profits here as well, because you remember that, that in that uh, in the example, we've got revenue and profits, right? But we want to be able to feed it through to the same um, visualization, okay? And, you know, here I've got it by date, but very easily with our model, we can also do this by customers if we wanted to as well, okay? So I always try and get things into um, wherever I can into tables initially so that I can really have a good look at what is actually going on um, within the tables. Now I just want to make sure there's no fills in place here. We can get rid of that. Okay. Let's just make sure that didn't ruin anything. Okay. 
No, all good. Okay, cool. So what I need to do now, right, is I need to think, I need to think more broadly. I need to think, okay, well, what ways am I going to thread different calculations into my report? Okay, so how do I want to filter my data? Okay, in this particular case, I decided, okay, I want to do it by certain days and I want to do it by either um, a certain metric, revenue or profits in this case is what I selected, okay? So what I did for that is I created some small tables. Now, you can create small tables really easily without having to, say, do something in Excel or do something somewhere else within this enter data, right? So that's all I did. I clicked on that, and then I entered these two particular um, tables here, okay? So let's have a look at these tables um, that I've already created. One I called uh date ranges okay so let's have a look at this i i created time frame so this particular column is going to be what i want in my slicer this particular column is all about the days so this is the actual number of days because this is a text column right and then i have an index column here as well i don't don't believe i actually um, use that in the the calculation at all so that's one quick table i created so these are what i'm going to thread through these particular metrics and this is the other one revenue and profits yes actually sorry i do you do use that index because that's how you sort that's how you sort this particular column in the slicer because you see in here if i come back to here you'll see that i have um, these two slices in there in the right order seven days 14 days profits revenues etc that's what the index column does okay right so now if we go across to here okay so now i've got those two particular columns right and i've got metric which I, would, I turn into a slicer, and then this is, so these, we need to somehow um, harvest the whatever someone selects here, right? We need to harvest it. And um, if I just have a look through here, I just wanna show you how I sort of set this up. Now, so the key now is to harvest what someone is selecting, and then we need to feed it through to calculations so that we're only calculating up the revenue for, for a particular time frame when we select revenue and time frame, and then profits for a particular time frame, okay? Now the key calculation here to get this done is this calculation called total days. Okay, so first of all, we need to isolate the days that um, we have when we select this particular slicer, right? Okay, so if I bring this in and I, I create a card, let's have a look at this particular formula. Now I've gone if has one value. This is a this is sort of a key um, concept when using if statements to isolate particular values. Okay, so if you have one value selected in the slicer, you need to try and recognize if that is true or not, okay? And so if it is one value is selected, then I'm gonna go selected value, those that, that column which has just the days, right? If not, then I've gone count rows dates because what that is doing is, check out here, when I don't have anything selected, I want a value to be input here, and that is the total number of days, and basically that's just gonna show all of the sales from the beginning of time because nothing is selected here. But if I click 30 days, well then it's gonna give me 30 day time frame, right? It's gonna give me a number of 30 days. And that's why, and you'll see in a second why this particular formula is super important for this particular um, this particular concept or or this particular technique to, to isolate time frames, okay? So now, now I've got this. Now what I need to do is I need to calculate something that works out my revenue and profits only over a specific time frame. Okay, and that's I've created these other formulas here where I've embedded, I've embedded this particular measure. I'm reusing it, right? So think about what calculate does here. Calculate. I'm still want to calculate up revenue, but I only want to now calculate up over a specific time frame, and I'm working off today minus. 30 days, if you think about it, right? We only want to look at that time window from today and all the way back for 30 days, okay? And so what I've done is I've said, okay, calculate up revenue, but then open up a time window where the date is less than or equal to today and it is less than, a greater than or equal to today minus the 30 days. But remember that this can change. This could be 90 days. This could be 180 days. It's totally dependent on, on what I am selecting inside of this time frame. That's what makes this, this formula so powerful, right? And so now if I move this in here, check out this amount. This amount is now being determined by the, the date range that I am selecting here. Okay, now I did exactly the same technique. Check out this particular formula is exactly the same. All I've done is I've got my profits measure inside of here, right? This initial measure here. And so if I bring this across, 
I'm now looking at profits over 180 days, profits over 90 days, profits over seven days, depending on my selection, okay? So now that I have, I'm threading through to my measure dynamically my selection of time frame, okay? And now I could just you know, start, stop here and I could just show, okay, I could show my revenue and I could show my profits and I could show them inside one visualization, but I wanna add another thread to this particular calculation. And I wanna add it based off of this selection here, okay? Revenue or profits. This part is not actually that difficult and is such a reusable technique. We, we need to use a, a formula that includes switch true. Okay, so the switch true for, um, technique enables us to uh, uh, thread through basically any measure into one measure. Okay, and so check this out. Uh, what I'm going to do here is, <clears throat> and we could actually change this up a little bit. So basically what I'm doing here with switch true is I'm evaluating each line here, uh, trying to see if it's true and then returning a value. You can return a, a static value, but you can also return a measure and that's what, what makes it so powerful. Okay, so instead of doing values here, well, probably what I would do now is selected value because you can actually have an alternative result um, and you won't get in, you wouldn't get, in, get an error. So I, I usually put blank in here if there's an issue. And then I'm just going to copy this down. But basically all I'm doing here is I'm evaluating is, is revenue selected or is profit selected, right? Okay. Uh, no, I want to do blank. Sorry. Is is revenue selected? If it is, yes, I want to show the revenue. If profits are selected, yes, I want to show the total profits measure, which is this one here. Okay. So now, if I bring this into here, this particular formula now is got two threads sitting underneath it or feeding up into it. Okay. I can change it over, and you see that it changes to that number there. And so I'll change this into a visualization so we can actually see it by itself as well. Right, okay, so now I have I have different amount of days. So this could, this could be 30 days. And now I'm looking at my profits, now my revenues, right? So that at its core is the technique here, right? That is at its core the technique of what we're, what we're attempting to... Um, to calculate right i'm threading i'm i'm and this is again utilizing measure branching quite extensively i'm threading through these dynamic calculations based on my selections into one visualization here okay and that is how we created this particular report okay so instead of just having you know by date or or by, by customer or by location, you know, this is a far more dynamic. And just think of how many different looks that you can create here. What I've also done is I've broken down, um, you'll see here that I have literally used the same measure in every single, every single visualization. It's all exactly that same measure, that final measure. But what I've done also within this page is we've added some additional filters to break out the analysis. So it's not just the entire east coast of America. I've broken it down into, you know, the the bottom, the the southeast, the um, mid east, and the you know, um, uh, the New New York and all the uh, upper eastern uh, east coast areas of the United States. And so to do that, all I did was I placed some additional filters on here. And that would that enabled me again to showcase a different look to what I would have done if I just showcased the raw data. So just think about the you know the versatility that you have at your fingertips with this sort of technique, right? And you layer on all the other great techniques you can you can generate inside of Power BI. I mean you, we could even put tool tips on top of here, like customized tool tips, which has been covered in, in another particular video. Um, there's just so many different ways that you could you could use this multi-threading technique and I personally really love it and um, utilize it when it makes sense um, so I highly recommend uh, you having a look at that as well okay good luck with this one hopefully um, you enjoyed walking through a slightly more advanced technique um, definitely something that I would I would have a go at you know and and maybe just think of uh, implementing it in a slightly different way to to really embed the understanding of it into your mind Okay, take care. All the best uh, with this one. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular 
tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.